the last speaker for this um, morning session is Mr. Shashadri Chari, who is a noted social activist and thinker. He's been a former editor of The Organizer, and he's a currently on the, uh, the All India Convener of the Foreign Affairs Cell of the BJP, and he's a member of the National Executive of the BJP in India. He's a regular speaker at intellectual debates and discussions, and I think I'm going to let him speak about education today. Thank you, Mr. Chari, for coming. <coughs> Professor Chibbal, <coughs> someone who has been, who is heading the foreign policy cell of the party and uh, who has been associated with the, also with the economic cell of the party. Um, I don't know why you chose uh, me to speak on education. To put you in a different but spot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I owe you a coffee for this. <laughs> There are some of the points that uh, have been made here. Uh, uh, Manisha actually stole my, one of my points, so I'm going to begin from there. Um, the India's uh, education scene, uh, yes, it's right, it needs to be uh, depoliticized. There are two things that the education system uh, suffers from. One is extreme politicization and extreme bureaucratization. The problem with the Indian democracy, the po political party, uh, the dem election system, democratic election system is the first past post uh, winner. So you need charismatic people. Uh, to contest. Every political party requires such people to contest elections because otherwise um, people like Pradeep Chibbar and uh, Sheshadri Chari cannot win elections in India. So you need people who can win elections. Otherwise you don't get the 282 mark and um, then you don't form a government. But the problem is I do not really understand why people who get elected by whatever means. Why should they be uh, heading some of the ministries? Like a doctor is heading the culture ministry, um, someone who is not an economist is leading the economic ministry. So I can like go on like this. This is not just for this government, but all the earlier governments also. So this corrective process has to begin somewhere. But if you think that uh, this is what Narendra Modi has been elected for and in two years what corrective measures he has taken and I don't think um, as my earlier speaker suggested you cannot make this kind of a corrective process in two years. It requires a huge kind of a mechanism to do this kind of a corrective process and also uh, some sort of a coordination and um, agreement between all political parties. But as far as uh, government versus education is concerned, the last, the first major recorded conflict starts something like 2000 years back when Chanakya, Acharya Chanakya at that time challenged the kingdom of uh, Magad, uh, King Dhananand who wanted to control all the educational institutions and Acharya Chanakya said, no, I will not allow you to do that. So it begins from there. So depoliticization has been a demand for a long time. But then, um, as our moderator pointed out, what is important to know and understand in the Indian scenario is the what is being taught. There is no regulator. So we don't know what is, what I mean, there is no correlation between what is being taught. Who are those who are being taught? Who are those who are teaching? What is their qualification? What is their quality? And what is being taught? So, so we actually need to pause and think on a number of these issues. Some of the issues that we face today are uh, not necessarily the issues that have come up in the last two years. There has been a long history 
of do's and don'ts some governments have to supposed to do something which they have not done some governments are not supposed to do something which they have done so this is the major problem whether education should have been in the state list permanently and not in the government central list at all whether it should be in the concurrent list is all different issues when it was brought in the concurrent issue list i am sure mrs gandhi must have thought of some other issues like the technical um, education issue and so many other things education needs a lot of it uh, needed a lot of uh, investment and incidentally in the first session we did not think about what is the amount of um, private uh, money that has gone into education and what is the kind of i mean today in india if you see education is one of the biggest business it 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 produces more uh, uh, the turnover in education is much more than in any other business like for example um, tourism or um, startup industry or call whatever it is the only other way to make uh, the kind of money that you make in education is to get banks from loan and not repay it so what what agenda do we have and uh, uh, although we cannot say that i mean this is the agenda that we want to do in the next 5 years but what uh, in 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 the broad sense of the term what the government would think is some 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 kind of a 10 point uh, 10 commandments the first and the foremost commandment of education should be that it should aim at collective national progress we will have to devise a system of education where the nation as a whole is able to make progress education should also instill a kind of common citizenship and awareness and strengthen uh, national integration the third and the most important thing that the education system today has to look at is is some sort of a very radical A reconstruction of the education system it's it's a uphill task and in order to do something very radical you will have to really face a great challenge especially in the political setup that we are having in india today fourth and the most important thing is to improve quality we saw about uh, what kind of quality we have Uh, the quality of education the quality of teaching the quality of curriculum the quality of infrastructure most importantly we don't have we are still after 65 70 years of independence we are still thinking of constructing toilets in schools i mean for a country of this size it's it's absolutely shameful so this quality of it's not just the quality of education the quality of the infrastructure through which we are giving education has also to improve there has to be a greater uh, attention to the propagation and education of science and technology uh, there was a time when iits were exclusive preserve of technology then indian institute of science but even if you look at that Uh, I was told that there is a recent survey which says that the number of entrants into IIT has gone down by one lakh this year. So it's a great, uh, it's a matter of concern. If students don't want to really get into IIT, mm. we should know why they don't want to get into science and technology education. There is also a very urgent need to re. restructure courses the pedagogy at uh, the undergraduate level education uh, the 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 educational um, curriculum in india more or less the choice of subjects are more like uh, 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 the the caste system in india like you cannot uh, you cannot you can move uh, horizontally but you cannot move vertically so if you if you if you are bad at mathematics then you cannot take uh, pcm is ruled out for you physics chemistry maths so this physics chemistry math combination what ultimately happens is if your mathematics is bad but if your physics is good or if your chemistry is good 
your choice of getting into the chemistry field and the physics field is is also closed forever so we don't un- i don't understand why we should not do it i if, if, i can give you my own personal example i i did my i i graduated as a commerce graduate long back and then i thought of doing law so i did my law graduation and then i i thought after having done these two things i was actually interested in history so why not do something in history so i enrolled myself for the history course but i was not allowed because they said unless you have you have done a, you have a commerce and law degree so you cannot do history so you have to go back to school and do your basic degree in history and then thankfully one professor found a via media out of it and they said you do one thing you appear for a s- aptitude test we will test you if your aptitude is really towards history so i had to appear for an aptitude test and mumbai university at that time bombay university it was thankfully the name was not changed so they had this system of aptitude test so they took an aptitude test and then i still remember my professor um, uh mrs abu said she was the head of the department of history she said going through your answer paper i don't understand why do you want to do history you know more history than many of the teachers here so i said no i want a ca- academic uh, qualification so that is how i got into it so it it took almost one year for me to co- get through these hurdles and for no economic benefit of doing this kind of a course but imagine if a person has to really change the course from medicine to f- physics or from physics to chemistry why should it be prevented i don't understand so this is another thing and the most important thing is about the implementation of all these rules and regulations so uh, this this government has a long list of things to do uh, how best it can be done uh how to change the system how to radicalize the education system it's a, it's a long uh, process and uh, this process will need some time this process will need some more uh, tools this process will also need a lot of rethinking and a lot of lot of remodeling so i think uh, to be very fair to this government a uh, lot of experiments are being made lot of things are being understood lot of things are being experimented it may good yield good results it may not yield good results uh, the intention is very good the content may suffer the content may appear to be not very good but the intent is very good so i think as long as the intent is good there is no dearth on experimenting with it so there is a lot of uh, capable people available outside the government and this is what this government is looking at going beyond the mandate of the parliament going beyond the mandate of election going beyond the mandate of uh, this 282 uh, what the prime minister really wants is to make a some sort of an outreach to a larger pool of resource persons who would contribute towards a radical change in the education policy of the country so that uh, is some sort of a work in progress and i think uh, instead of making an assessment of what it has been done in 2 years or what it will do in the next 3 years i think this kind of a continuity should be uh, kept up and if this continuity is kept up i think we will have good results thank you thank you